So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the speakers for today. We have with us uh, today Anne O'Riordan. She's the Greuther Sales Director. We also have Daniel Tiemann. He's the Greuther's Vice President in STEM. With us today is Tom Clark, the Greuther's Vice President in Global Publishing. And last but by no means least, Olaf Schmalthus, um, the Greuther's Manager of Product and Metadata. So with that, I'll hand over to Anne, who will start the presentations today. Anne, would you like to um, start sharing and I'll stop. Great, thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Hi, everyone. Let me just start sharing. Okay, do I need to switch screens, Andrea? What are you seeing now? Not seeing any sharing yet. No. Well, let's try again. Ah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. um, slideshow from beginning. Switch. Do I need to switch yep. screen? Switch, please, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Great. Okay. Well, I'm going to introduce our EBA model, explain and explain how it works. So in terms of content coverage, as Andrea said, I'm going to leave that to our editorial colleagues. I'm going to focus on the, uh, the content offered by our publisher partners. And I'm also going to cover details of the collections available within the De Gruyter JISC EBA agreement together with the pricing and the various, the other terms and conditions of the uh, JISC agreement. But before we get into the detail of our EBA business model, I'll start with a brief introduction to De Gruyter. We are an independent scholarly publisher in business in 1749, and we publish books, journals, databases, and other scholarly content. Our head office is in Berlin, is in Berlin, and we have offices in, in Boston and Beijing. So there are a lot of numbers here on, on screen. I'll just summarize briefly. Um, so in terms of book publishing output, uh, we publish around 1,500 titles a year. We also publish 330 subscription, but primarily hybrid journals now, as well as 100 pure open access journals. Our ebook archive includes around 50,000 titles. And we also publish a number of databases and reference works, primarily in the humanities. In addition to our own content, we host ebooks on behalf of 30 or so publisher partners, including 20 American university presses. And within that program, we offer about 3,000 or so front list publisher partner titles each year on the platform. And the total number of ebooks on the platform is currently uh, 160,000, of which about 147, 48,000 of those are in, um, in our EBA collections. So in terms of what's included in the EBA, that depends on the package selected, and we have a number of package options available, which I'll go into later. But looking at the complete EBA offering, the content can be divided broadly into four categories. Firstly, you've got the De Gruyter content, uh, and that uh, was currently a, a total of around 57,000 ebooks in the humanities, social sciences, and STEM. Then the second category is American University Press content. We host approximately 60,000 ebooks from 15 American University Presses. Third category, uh, UK and European based publishers, of which there are 10 and make up about 20,000 of our titles in EBA. And then there are uh, four partnerships in place with uh, other US-based publishers, so not university presses, um, four of those, and that's about, uh, about 5,000 titles. So that's, that's the makeup of the, um, the complete EBA collection. 
And now just a few words about uh, the, the development of the, the EBA um, since we launched it. So Degorita launched uh, the EBA business model back in 2012. And at the time, the value of content included in the EBA was about 1.5 million. Um, today, it's uh, the, the value of the entire EBA collection is, is uh, around 26 million. And you can see from the chart here that from the period 2018 onwards, the collection has grown in size from 43,000 to 147,000. Or if you're looking at English language titles only, the increase is from 21,000 to over 80,000 titles. And why have we been able to increase the collection so dramatically? Well, there are a number of factors. Firstly, the growth in, in De Gruyter output and particularly uh, in our English language programme. Secondly, the digitization of the De Gruyter archive, making previously out of print titles available again. And then the, the, the third reason is as a result of the, the growth in our, in our partner program. On average, we've been adding two to three new publisher partners each year. So for example, in the past year, we added Berghan Books, Edinburgh University Press, and Central European University Press. And, and then just to, to make the point about annual price increases year on year within the JISC agreement, they have been on average uh, around 3%. In, in fact, in 2020, we didn't implement a price increase. Therefore, the EBA pricing via the JISC agreement really does represent good value for money. So overall, in terms of subject coverage, the De Gruyter program and our partner publisher programs cover in the region of 30 subject areas across STEM humanities and social sciences. And you'll hear more detail about the De Gruyter programs from Tom and Daniel shortly. But my next slide will focus on the partner publisher content within EBA. Some more numbers. Um, 32 partners in total, um, of which 20 are American university presses and uh, around 80,000 titles in total from, um, from all of the partners. I mentioned earlier that we, uh, we get about 3,000 new titles a year from partner publishers. I should say 3,000 front list titles per year. And since 2012, De Groyser has digitized archives uh, on behalf of 12 of our per publisher partners. And as a result of that, we have um, at least 10,000 exclusive archive titles from Harvard, Columbia, Rutgers, Hawaii, and California University Presses. Yeah, as I just said, uh, within the EBA package, we, we've got the 10,000 exclusive archive titles from the five partners I just mentioned. Then we also have three exclusive partners in EBA, Gorgias Press, Academic Studies Press, and Lynn Reiner Publishing. Academic Studies Press publishes across humanities and social sciences. Uh, Lynn Reiner publishes in uh, textbooks and monographs in politics, social sciences, and the humanities. And Gorgias Press is an independent academic publisher specializing in, in the history and religion of the Middle East. As you are no doubt aware, at least some of the partner content we host is available on other platforms. And I have a couple of slides outlining the level of exclusivity of the partner titles within our EBA. So you can see here in the larger pie chart, um, the overall level of exclusivity. And so you'll see that 37% of the partner content within our EBA is not available within any other EBA program. The small chart breaks down the exclusivity across frontlist, backlist, and, and archive or pre-20 uh, or 2000 content. 
So you can see that ranges from 11% for copyright year 2000 to 2013, and a further 15% exclusivity for pre-2000 content. Here you can see a breakdown of exclusivity by partner publisher. In terms of exclusivity, it varies quite a bit, but there is at least some level of exclusivity for all but one partner. And with the exception of the three exclusive partners, the highest levels of exclusivity are with those partners for which we digitize their book archives. So what do customers really say about De Reuters EBA? Um, currently, there are around 150 universities across Europe that have access to De Reuters EBA package. And we recently undertook uh, a survey to see um, how these institutions uh, perceived De Reuters EBA. Here are just a quick uh, recap of the top re five reasons why they like our EBA model. As you can see, customers nominated the depth and breadth of our content as their top reason why they chose De Reuters EBA. As Anne said, it's been over 10 years since the launch of a De Reuters EBA program, and currently there are 148,000 titles in 29 subject areas included. So customers really like the large and diverse, diverse collections available. They also uh, deem the model to be flexible, affordable, and the title selection progress process being simple and intuitive. The next slide I just wanted to leave up for you for a couple of seconds, and there are, you can see a few of the comments um, made by customers uh, while we did the survey. Um, you can have a look at this uh, in more detail after the sessions. We would like to move on now to get an insight into the subject areas included uh, in our EBA program. And for that, Anne needs to stop sharing. And then we're going over to Daniel, who is going to fabulously uh, tell us all about the STEM program. So over to you, Daniel. Great, thank you very much. And um, well, warm welcome from my side. I'm happy to be here and have the opportunity to present our SDM program. Today, um, so I'll try sharing my screen. I hope that's very really successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll let and you know. Let's see into the presentation mode. I hope. Yeah. Here we go. Good. So, um, welcome again, and maybe just a few words um, on me. What am I doing, and who I am? Uh, who I am. Um, Daniel Thiemann, I'm Vice President for um, our department or division from Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. Um, that's mostly publishing books. Um, in my department, we of course have a huge department also for journals in these areas um, and do have some databases on that too. Um, before I started working with the Goiter, I've been working with Elsevier before and Bottas Kluver, just to mention two of the big players I've been working with. And from coming from these um, companies, just like I, I brought in some of my experiences um, into our STM portfolio here. So um, Anne already brought up a slide um, just indicating what topic areas we are covering at the Goiter. And I now want to focus on our STM subject areas. And we have three kind of clusters in our subject areas, and that's physical sciences, technology, mathematics. And we used to do medicine and life sciences, we deprioritized a little bit because um, this is where um, Elsevier Waters Kluver and the big guys are in the market. So we were focusing on um, subject areas um, where we can really um, uh, have a strong uh, position and we do succeed in many, many areas uh, where we have a leading portfolio on the market. So physical sciences mostly consists of chemistry, industrial chemistry, material sciences, and physics as the major topic areas, and then technology, we, cover, we are covering computer sciences and engineering and mathematics. It's kind of purely mathematics with all the different um, series we're covering here on different topic areas. So going more into detail, what focus areas, what focus areas we are covering in these um, top level um, subject areas, um, on the one hand, uh, we're trying to focus on, on, on 
very topical subject areas um, to to face um, the the most challenging um, problems on the in the in the world on the science side. And thus, this led us to the point where we said we want to focus on these processes, on artificial intelligence, polymers, nanotechnology, analytical chemistry, energy, thermal technology, biotech, and, and in the end, mathematics, because mathematics is feeding in so much content and the spaces for so many of our focus areas um, that this works well together for us. Um, I just like want to give you an overview of the kind of books we were we are providing. Um, we have different book types and series of books, and this is kind of uh, rising with a, with a level of sophistication. We start with the basic book textbooks, which is the De Goyde Studium um, series, which is mostly German um, content here. It's soft cover and it's approximately four hundred to one thousand pages, and. This being said is that we we are now trying to um, get into books which are um, not that size. So you can see that with the other series, because in our experience from the market feedback we get is that um, it's not anymore about the big books, but more like comprehensive um, books. So they're easily, um, easily to consume and to work with. So the next series will be the graduate series. It's just more advanced textbooks, also soft, co soft cover. But here we have 100% English content we are publishing here. And the next series will be SDEM series, um, the pro professional textbook. So another higher level of sophistication, um, which is almost 100% English books. And then again, we have monographs in our book portfolio which is targeting uh, the, the, the academic market purely. Um, and this is also almost 100% English content. I'd like to talk a little bit about our value proposition. Um, from what we are talking with, um, with customers, but also with librarians, but also um, with um, our graduate um, students and, and young professionals, um, we are targeting our we are targeting our contents towards um, easily comprehensive and practice oriented contents for and this is our main target groups graduate students and young professionals on interdisciplinary topics and that's very important to us because we don't want to be have this one dimensional view on our topics science isn't like that anymore it's in, uh, interdisciplinary it's multi dimensional dimensional you can't just talk about one topic and not including others i just mentioned mathematics and artificial intelligence for example so we are striving for having books on interdisciplinary topics um contents of course are supposed to be highly topical high quality and um we are also kind of picky when it comes down to which authors we, we, we choose. And we have a very experienced acquisition editors team and also content editors um, who are curating um, our contents. Our main goal is um, to help our readers um, to maximize the impact of their work and the progress of their careers. And that also, of course, includes uh, the progress of their studies and the successful um, progress of their studies. Besides this, these kind of hard facts are like um, what, what the topics and the content should be like, we also cover or integrate some of the in, emotional factors into our contents. And this is on both sides, author side and customer side or reader side. What we are going for, and this is so important in our, from, from our perception or from what customers, readers want from us, and also what our authors expect from us. And this is including and really walking the talk when it comes down to inclusion and diversity. We are striving for high quality contents, of course, but from authors, which also reflect a diverse um, universe or globe in that way. Um, so that's not only regarding age or gender, but also and especially when it comes down to the descent. So where does do the authors come from? Um, who are writing on our topics. And doing this, uh, we of course also target as an audience, a young diverse audience, which is modern and expecting that meanwhile from us um, as a publisher. 
And um, I'd just like to put you some screenshots in here from webinars we have been conducting over the last couple of months. And it, what you can see is that we have um, on the APA conference last year, but also from the Berlin, Berlin Science Week, we had the panel discussions around gender equity and diversity in STEM, because especially STEM is um, a topic area um, where women um, are sometimes um, on the, um, are, are not that advantaged like male um, participants are. So this is what we're trying to cover. We try to raise this as a, not an issue, but a challenge to the market and help um, actually um, our customers and also our authors um, to proceed in their career. And as a, um, uh, result of that, well, you can see that this is just a slide on our author diversity. We have a regionally distribution of authors. Um, so that's a very colorful chart, uh, chart I'm presenting here. And what you can see that, especially for the EMEA region, we have so many authors coming from so many countries and also in, in Americas and APEC. We have a huge diversity of authors here. So this is us trying to walk the talk when it comes down to diversity. And um, I just want to introduce you to one great project which has started with um, Worcester Polytechnic Institute here in the US. Um, and this is our project in Global Integrated STEM. Global Integrated STEM uh, is supposed to cover um, topics, challenges, um, which are mostly um, uh, facing the, the global south. Um, and this is us trying to bring together northern scientists, uh, scientists from the northern hemisphere and from the southern uh, hemisphere to offer a forum where they can just exchange um, um, scientific approaches for, for the STEM areas um, on par. Um, and so that to have an, uh, an, uh, an exchange um, on, on, on the same eye height. Um, this series or this project consists of a journal and a book series and an associated web webinar series. We are trying to orient um, our contents on the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals and Diversity, diversity and Inclusion. And um, this is open to universities, institutions, authors from all over the world. Um, and um, that will consist of paid contents and open access content. Um, just a brief, um, uh, just a hint on a, on a webinar we will have um, on May 18th um, on this kind of the kickoff webinar uh, on Global Integrated STEM series. We are really happy um, that Wei Lu, the coordinator of the United Nations Interagency Test Team, will join us as a panelist and also probably a Romain Morency, who's the executive director of um, the World Academy of Sciences. I just mentioning that to show that this is really um, a webinar series and a project um, which uh, is available also to every reader uh, it's for free so we will also notify uh, that on our uh, website so that everyone can join in that's additional complementary contents we're providing um, I now want to go through our topic areas just in brief, just to give you an overview of, of, of more of the quantity of what we have here. Um, I will be providing, um, or in the slides, there will be um, QR codes, um, which will point to our um, flyer, to our 2022 backlist um, of the topic areas. So when you have your mobile um, uh, ready, you can just like scan this and download the flyers for the um, topic areas. Um, while I'm just describing what we have here. The first one I want to go into more detail is our green processing um, topic area here again with a, um, a reference to, to the webinars and the project on global integrated STEM, a very important topic. Um, our backlist in these areas, um, 2022, uh, 12 to 22, is approximately 170 books we are already published here. And our front list in 2023 will be about 35 books um, to be published um, well this year. Um, we also, and this is on the bottom of the page, have um, some very um, uh, uh, nice journals um, on these areas with also um, mentionable or significant impact factors. Second portfolio I'd like to focus on is our energy um, cluster and energy 
also is a critical area in global uh, in global challenges, and um, we are focusing on that to just like also um, provide some local approaches um, on on the um, on these um, really important topic areas. Um, a backlist of about sixty four titles um, already published, and fourteen titles to be published this year. Um, here's the QR code um, for your reference, future reference. And then there are a couple of books and journals we are also covering on these topic areas. Um, my next cluster um, I will pre present is our artificial intelligence portfolio. I mean, I don't have to mention ChatGPT. I mean, now I guess um, everyone knows what uh, artificial intelligence is capable to do. Uh, ChatGPT as, as this chat bot is just like one very prominent and visible um, application we, we, we can use now as consumers. But of course, artificial intelligence um, includes incorporates way more than that, especially when it comes down to process intensification and in, in industrial chemistry, for example, um, but also for um, uh, all other topic areas um, which we are covering, computer sciences, material sciences, um, so one highly um, topical um, topic cluster we have here with 75 books already published and 20 books to be published next year, uh, this year. Then it's nanotechnology, also very topical um, topic area. Um, and what you can see here is that we um, have uh, 85 books published in our backlist in the last, um, well, that's uh, eight years. And then our, our front list for next year will um, comprise of uh, 12 books uh, we have in this topic clusters. Nanotechnology, nanotechnology is uh, of grown, growing importance um, also in topic areas like medicine, for example. So um, very important and um, great cluster within our uh, portfolio. There's one journal, and especially uh, on the bottom right of the page, this is Nanophotonics, one of our blockbuster journals in this topic area with a really high impact factor. And the same um, goes for the nanotechnology reviews, um, which is complementary journals on this very important topic areas. And then there's a new topic cluster um, uh, we just like um, brought up, and this is biotechnology. Um, biotechnology becoming more and more important also um, and uh, I mean, you probably um, noticed or, or remember that there was this mRNA um, vaccine um, uh, discussion, and um, which kind of is, was really a huge achievement in this in this area. And this is only one part um, where where biotechnology play, plays a really major role, and and helps fostering and facilitating innovation in that case. Um, we have a backlist of what about 127 books already going for 20 books to be published this year and also in our portfolio have um, two journals which are really important in this topic area and then last but I think it's last but not least uh, is our portfolio of um, analytical chemistry which is also part of um, this very important cluster around chemistry, industrial chemistry, bio, biochemistry. Um, and that's kind of investigating, scrutinizing what's happening in, in, um, in, uh, in all the chemistry areas. And here we have a cluster of 75 books in the backlist till 2022 and eight books coming up this year uh, on analytical chemistry. Also very nice journal in that part and a really good book portfolio um, for this interdisciplinary topic. And uh, two, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, last one. And this is a market, this is where we are market leader um, on the market. So there's no publisher who has a more comprehensive um, portfolio of books on polymers. Um, we the Guardia built up a portfolio on this topic area in the last couple of years, which is meanwhile a leading portfolio in the market, 90 books only on polymers and, um, and 15 books to be published this year. And I, cannot overestimate the, the, the importance of polymers in everyday um, life. Um, this is um, our personal consumer life, but also in the industry. I'd say also some journals with this topic area. Um, three of uh, actually just focusing on polymers and uh, a really big and great portfolio on, of books um, for, for polymers. 
So that's it for my side. Thank you very much for my for your attention. And um, well, I think the discussion question and answers will be in the end. I'm happy to provide any additional information if you have questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel. There aren't any questions at the moment, so I'll I'll keep an eye on those. Um, let's quickly uh, hand. Yeah, thank you. Let's quickly hand over to Tom Clark, and he will give us um, an insight on the HSS program. Over to you. Tom. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, just going to share my screen. Does that work? Yep. Yep. It works. If you put it on presentation mode now, we should yep. all be set. Has that worked? It takes a few seconds. Did you click on presentation mode? <laughs> I did down the bottom, but let me do the top one. Uh... There we go. Yep, that's it. Super. So my name is Tom Clark. I'm responsible for publishing at De Gruyter, uh, the best place to publish anything. Um, as Daniel's covered science, I will cover for you our humanities program, which um, uh, will will have a surprise in it. Uh, I'll get to that. It's a, it's a small joke. So humanities is our sort of bedrock stuff. It's where our reputation is based. It um, covers quite a few subject areas. Uh, why is it so special at DG? Well, we've been doing it for nigh on 300 years. I like to round up, so let, let's run with that. Um, so 270 years of experience within the humanities, and this is an amalgam of companies that were born out of a very well-funded European base. Uh, we now operate globally. Um, digital humanities is, 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 is part of our portfolio where we're really trying to enhance the beyond the book approach. Um, but that means that the book is always at the center of what we do. So therefrom that we want to make sure we have dynamic publishing around these these theses, and that occurs when tenured uh, professors particularly can experiment with where data sets and 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 that allows us also to have big complex uh, projects too. Um, open access is 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 a, is a good part of what we do too. It's fifteen percent of our front list titles, which are the forward list. Uh, are published in gold, so those are, are um, coming from the funders themselves, and that enables us to uh, work with different different suppliers than the ones we would commission directly. But we absolutely uh, ensure that what we publish is what we want to publish, so that's part of our brand reputation. Um, and we have, over the last oh, probably four or five years now, had ongoing author surveys, which have enabled us to understand what people are reading, why they like sort of working with us. Uh, and our surveys at the moment are promoting us as courageous in, in, in tackling cutting edge topics and topics that are, are pri uh, 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 before they're formalized into sort of, sort of classics um, or, or stable subjects. We enjoy that um, bringing together different communities. Um, we are publishing now uh, across North America um, and the German market and indeed into Asia Pacific. Um, we don't distinguish, we want the best books. So our core program is shown here on the left. This is this light blue. Uh, this is uh, classics, theology, um, Islamic studies, religious studies, etc. Christianity. Uh, history, of course, is a very large subject, but we tend to distinguish between history and classics, which is um, uh, ancient works, archaeology is in there. Um, library and information sciences, nothing more important, obviously, uh, is, is, it is fundamental to a cluster of what we do. It ensures that we have an outreach in different ways and we're aware of the business interests of, of, of uh, information sciences. Philosophy, um, which is linked to our classics program, uh, that's been a very stable program for some time. And then at the center there, you'll see language, literature, and culture. That includes uh, German studies, it includes film studies, um, and includes obviously analysis of, of big lit, 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 literature tomes. In the dark blue, you'll find what we would consider um, our core social science list. Um, some of these are professional fields like law. That is inherently German in, in, in De Gruyte. We are experimenting a little bit in English. Um, linguistics uh, is related to our languages program as well, is in, in associated with that. So that covers uh, some works in Spanish, et cetera, in French. And business economics, uh, evergreen area. Um, and that comprises what we codify as this sort of bridge between humanities and social sciences. The purple box, very bright indeed, is the surprise, is the reveal, is that for some time, well, for a couple of years now, during, from, from COVID, we were experimenting more with what a classic university press would do, and that includes politics and sociology. So we can talk a little bit more about that. 
I just wanted to say that the vast majority of these subjects outside of law are doing more than 50% of the forward list is English. Uh, the rest are in, is, is, is historically in German language and then, as I said, in languages, some, some uh, other European languages. So the new subject areas of social sciences is essentially an expansion, a recognition that within social sciences there's some very exciting current affairs, uh, politics. Um, we also uh, we want to embrace the big discussions. So um, we in this one it's entirely English. Um, we are focusing on those hot topics and scholarships that moves across the global issues. So I think within there's there's a couple of uh, titles listed here. I think you'll see different cover designs that we're pushing. We're engaging authors in in different ways. We're having to work ourselves around different events which might codify social sciences in different ways than and we think are emerging markets. We work very hard at this new subject area. Um, within social sciences, then we have, uh, I just need to move, sorry, my box of people away because I can't see my screen. Um, we are looking at uh, politics, applied sociology, uh, human geography and science and technology and society. Those, uh, we're academic publishers, so we like to codify some of these social science themes into hot topics, if you like, but ones that where we can uh, visualize the stability of social sciences. From those uh, colored uh, subjects on the right, we then mix and match um, actual books which are led by the authors themselves. And that enables us to um, grow programs, but also make sure those programs are colorful and on topic. Um, we use data-driven product development quite a lot these days. We don't, we, we, we use it, we, uh, we are commissioned through databases uh, that give us insights as to what's coming out within the research and funding communities, but we also make sure that what we uh, produce as books are optimised to those subjects. So we have to choose whether it's um, a single authored book, which is actually a lot of what we do, but the, the handbooks where we're making definitive um, guidance happen, that has to be carefully uh, considered when we're doing cross disciplinary books, particularly if, if you look at emerging topics like COVID, uh, we made uh, a lot of books at that time uh, that has epidemiology and other social science issues connected together. But of course, COVID is less hot topic now so we are now looking at uh, new and emerging subjects but it gives you an idea that we we, are, we can be very quick at what we do so sometimes it, that we are incubating ideas for some time uh, so this gambit about social science areas it if you look at these bubbles you'll see that we within our History uh, and religion areas, we um, have Jewish studies. So this isn't exclusively about the religion of, of, of Jewishness, if you like. It's also about the literature and culture of those communities, about the history uh, and, of course, of the religion program. So we don't segment ourselves within the team. So the blue and dark blue sort of hex hexagons, I think they were, that you saw earlier, do sort of talk to the way we structure ourselves internally, but we're talking to, to our audiences in these sorts of ways. So we don't sort of fight over books. We want to make sure that people are energised about the market. Digital studies is uh, an odd one, if you like, but it's really about enhanced publishing around not just ebooks, but also within the ebook. What can we add to that research profile? Migration studies, very, very hot at the moment, obviously a very painful subject for us to do, but there are cultural aspects, geographical as aspects, hot political, difficult political issues and the historical perspectives. We can never be, uh, forget that mig migration is obviously very urgent these days, but it has been going on through throughout history. And we really like to tussle those uh, um, current and historical perspectives. Um, the other ones on the right, you'll see that we take a regional approach occasionally, because um, if you look at cities or you look at oceans, some of the hot themes, that when you're looking at, at uh, regions themselves, they have a particular, um, they unify some of these um, sort of course, core humanity subjects and interdisciplinary sub subjects, and it allows us some leverage within those communities and those, those um, institutions that exist there, who uh, often are supported by global institutions, um, it, for example, studying in, in, in Mediterranean issues. So modernization is where we're trying to express ourselves. So we are not trying to um, un underplay the fact that we do some critical core text and we'll continue to do so. We invest very heavily in large programs of core classics, for example, but we are finding where the, the emergence of disciplines are stressed a lot, both in popular 
subjects we've introduced social sciences but also we're looking at for example philosophy and ai you know the, the interpreter what does it mean to have an impact from different subject areas and that's very much how how the team work um, so gender and queer studies environmental studies uh, medical humanities these are all subjects which blend and bolt on interests some of them are formally presented at academic conferences and are, are in, enhanced by our faculty with these with with these names but we are also blending some of that stuff together that can be challenging but it's something that we enjoy doing and in the end the academics themselves who involve themselves are uh, in in subjects that we we grow together are really excited, excited about that so gaming for example has become a big part of our history program who'd have thought um, some of the new book series um, in HSS, uh, since 2001, we've, we've um, founded over 75 book series. So book series allow us um, a, a, a mode of working that captures, um, it allows us to invest uh, in a, a community for some time, rather than always commissioning live, which is what we like doing, but we like to land series so that we have a consistency in the marketplace. And it provides the authors, the academics in, in place, a voice that they can direct to with us. So that's a bit like a, a journal would be conceived by academics with the publisher, and they would conceive how thematic issues would express themselves through the journal, so that has an identity, and we do that too. So some examples here in media studies, in health studies within a, within an HSS perspective, um, gender and queer studies, as I've mentioned. So we have some wonderful books there um, uh, emerging uh, from new queer medievalism. So we're finding that when you take a historical perspective, some of the modern challenges that we face in society, we can express in our publishing. Um, and we have also been looking at women philosophers who were in, in, incredibly influential at the time when all these famous men were out there doing philosophy and landing tomes with us too, that they were in the background actually writing a lot of this stuff. And we're, we're, we're finding new, new and unique ways of, of, of creating value for our authorship. Um, in North American studies, uh, encourage us is to look at the politics and histories of that massive continental space that is America. It includes obviously Canada, not to be forgotten with, North, with the USA as well. But we focus very much at the USA at the moment because it is is a big uh, market for us, and we are um, we have our toe in the water, and we have about a, a quarter of our English content is now from the US, broadly speaking. Um, the English language output then, that's almost like a segue that I, I planned, uh, is such that we are growing uh, quite rapidly. Uh, that's very important for us to come from a German base where we continue to do great work. Uh, we're also looking at um, translations, actually, to actually to look at AI and the way that we can express some of the classics that we've produced over the, the centuries into English. But commissioning new uh, is 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 where we're focused. So about 50% is in English. Um, some of it's across different subject areas. Some subject areas are entirely English, partly because of the way things are funded. Um, but it's very important to express that we are a truly international place now. I have staff members in, in China. I have staff members uh, in, in, in the US and, and across Europe, including the UK. Um, so I think I've covered those subjects as we expressed it. And that's the last very dark place. So let me uh, stop sharing and I'll yeah, hand Thank you back. very much, Tom. That was a very light place. Even you start finished off dark. Okay, good, good. Right, that's, uh, let me move on swiftly. I'm a bit worried about time. I'm sorry, it is so interesting that it takes a while, I guess. Right, we're moving on to service and support and what can our customers expect? So all of this sc screen is there for you and we'll move on to metadata and um, discovering services. Yeah, thank you. This should be pretty straightforward. It's only one slide. So um, please let me introduce myself again. My name is Olaf and I'm an actual librarian here at the Greuter and here to serve all your metadata needs. And should you choose to start an EBA with us, then most likely we will be in touch quite often over that period. Why is that? Because metadata is important, right? And, and an integral part of that program, as you cannot use what you cannot find or even know of, which is especially true for new titles. And while your institution will have access to all new eBooks on the Greuter.com right away, uh, your patrons will most likely only start using them when they find the eBooks in your catalog. And this is why I am dedicated to make our titles visible in your discovery tools, may it be directly or through third-party services like Ex Libris Alma or WorldCard, etc. 
Uh, for that, we do provide a monthly update of Mark and KBAT records for all our collections, in which we communicate all the changes that happened over the last month, may it be new title editions or deletions. Of course, our MARC records uh, usually include all the expected data points like DOIs, subject headings and classifications or OCL CIDs, but also some enrichments like table of contents, further descriptions and links to the covers that you can use and so on. Um, these are distributed to all data recipients at the same time, usually by the end of the month. And so if interested as an EBA customer, you can get those through a monthly mailing as well. Naturally, as already mentioned, you can use any third party service of your choice, may it be from Clarivate Procus Ex Libris, as they are now uh, called uh, EBSCO Discovery Service, OCLC WorldCut, and so on, as they all have our EBA collections set up for your convenience already and activate your respective collection there. We may be able to assist should you have any questions on finding the correct target in these systems and all questions around metadata can be addressed to metadata at agroida.com. May it be for EBA or also your latest pick and shoes acquisition or whatever. And just for the sake of completeness, we also finally do offer now a self-service for metadata within our admin interface, which is called DG Data. Link in the description where you can download not only your EBA usage reports, but also the whole record set as is. Yet, uh, we regrettably currently still without any options to pull only the new records. Uh, here, I'd still recommend our mailing for incremental updates. We have also some kind of interim metadata portal where you will find the same download links from the mailing to the record sets and KWAT files again, but also for all or other off the shelf ebook packages alongside some useful links and information around metadata to Kreuter, a link to the GitHub uh, in the description as well. Naturally, all our records <clears throat> are free of charge and you can use and re reuse them as you please. And if you have some library network in your region that we do not yet cooperate with, but in your opinion we should, then uh, please get in touch and we'd be happy to get them covered as well so that we can serve you even better this way. And so uh, I think this would have been the very quick run through from my end already. Please, should there be any questions or remarks, leave them in the chat. And with that, I'm delighted to hand back over to you. Oh, thank you, Olaf. Yes, as Olaf said, please do write an email and um, the metadata team and Olaf's team will, will help you with any further questions you have if you if you don't want to put it in the chat box today. Yes. Now I'm moving on swiftly. Um, now the marketing department uh, at the Greuter offers also a wide range of information tools and resources to help you develop your collections and also support library users. Twice a year, we send all of our customers updates and EBA news via our customer newsletter for EBA customers. And we also help you craft content for your patrons to make sure um, your users feel at ease with um, accessing the content available to them. We have text ready uh, for multiple formats for you, crafted for the needs of all the institutions. Um, you can here simply repurpose the content or, or broadcast it uh, as it is uh, through your in, internal channels. Should you uh, need customization, which uh, a lot of the customers uh, like, um, then we also can do that. Um, and please write an email to marketingemir at degreuter.com and we will be able to help you. I have one more slide here, which you can have a look at after the event, because those two uh, links will um, give you all the information you need on the insight into our EBA, the workflows, metadata, information that Olaf um, has just spoke about, met, um, access issues, um, the Greuter titles in your holdings, usage statistics, as well as promotional material um, for your library, it's all there. And um, should you want any further information, then obviously write to me anytime. <laughs>